What's up, guys? What a rich capital. So listen, Gary Gensler, chair of the SEC, as most of you know by now, gave a very important talk today. But I think the troops are rallying a bit too quickly, and I want to throw my opinion in the ring, even though it might not be the most popular one. The most popular one being that payment forward flow is just going to get banned, and we're all going to ride off into the sunset in our Lambos, right? Well, look, let's talk reality here. There's a few things I want to go over. First of all, the SEC's motive. Now, Gary Gensler himself tends to be a decent speaker. And I think the SEC, as of late, is on the right track. But here's the thing. Gary Gensler continues to say that all he wants to do is listen to feedback from retail investors and then act on what he's getting if it makes sense to do so. Yet on their YouTube channel, all comments are turned off always. If you look at any of the SEC's social media where comments are allowed, replies are allowed, pretty much all they get is, what are you doing about payment for order flow? What about Citadel? What about this? What about that? A lot of it rely or comes back around to payment for order flow. Now, when you're the SEC, you can only hide for that, from that for so long. And eventually, you have to address it. Even if you don't necessarily have any plans of acting on it in the near future. Now, is the SEC actually looking at this? And are they going to make changes at some point? I think at some point in the future, the entire model of payment for order flow will be a lot different than it currently is here in the States. Now, currently, remember, payment for order flow is banned in the UK, Canada, and Australia. I don't think it's reasonable or realistic to think that it's going to be banned tomorrow here in the States, right? You know, figuratively speaking. Here's what Gary Gensler said today. He said he doesn't like the way payment for order flow is currently being carried out in the States. He doesn't like that there is not much of a motive for more competition. He thinks there's not enough competition. He doesn't like the way it's being operated because look, currently, when you send an order to your retail brokerage, think, you know, Robin Hood, TD Ameritrade, uh, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, what they do is they send your order to a wholesale broker who's then gonna execute as long as they're meeting or bettering the best available price on a US exchange or collectively, okay? Now, here's the thing. The rules that Gary Gensler proposed today would require your broker, a retail broker, to send your order to the wholesaler that's offering the best deal for you rather than paying the brokerage the most, which is currently not a thing necessarily. All right. So let's take a look up here. This is the reason why so many people in our community one payment for order flow just downright banned. There's more, there's more to look at though, and it's a lot more complicated than that. So look at this. This is TD Ameritrade's payment for order flow by venue pie chart. 41.5% Citadel. 18% is next. Number two, by the way, is only 18%. Global execution brokers. Next is Morgan Stanley, and so on and so on. Citadel is 41.5%. So yeah. There's not a whole ton of competition, right? And that's what Gary Gensler said. He doesn't like the way this is playing out. There's not enough motive for more competition. There should be something in place that drives more competition. Okay? Here's the thing. A formal proposal probably won't come until at least fall. Later than that, retail can look at this again and decide whether or not it's something that they actually want the SEC to adopt. Now, actually implementing this would take, I think, a while. Okay, I'm not sure I'm convinced that the SEC is going to rug pull major, major brokerages and major, major firms that you see up here their entire or a very large portion of their business model. I don't know if they're willing to rug pull it. Now, let's take a step back and actually, these are my honest thoughts on payment for order flow. I don't think I've ever actually put this out there before, so I'm gonna do it now. First of all, is it good? I don't know, it depends how you define good. Is it detrimental to 
you know, a lot of plays in a roundabout way, a lot of stocks in a roundabout way? Is it providing a lot of liquidity to companies who may use that liquidity and do other things with it that retail may not like? Yep. I think so. <laughs> On the other side, look at this. Payment for order flow provides a very low barrier to entry for the average passive investor. If you're going to buy a stock, let's say you're going to buy SPY three times a year with one order each time, and you're going to hold it for 40 years, one of these brokerages might not be a bad bet. Right? I mean, why, why bother with commission at all? Why bother with getting in touch with a rep? Why bother with going through a setup process that might take a few days when you can download Robinhood, deposit money, and be buying stock in five minutes without talking to anybody? Right? That's the benefit, I think. Very low barrier to entry. It's much less intimidating to get involved. What does that mean? More people getting involved in the market, which over time, as they become more serious and maybe move on to other brokers or even stay with what the, where they're at, more liquidity. Markets move more efficiently. When you see a crash like 2020, granted a lot of it is algorithm driven, but there's humans involved too. Things move quicker. We've talked about this before. Crashes seem to happen quicker, but recoveries also seem to be a little bit more efficient than they were however many decades ago. Because there's more participants than there's ever been. Liquidity is better than there's ever been, than it's ever been. And having more participants is a good thing. If you take a step back and you take out all the free brokers, how many people... Think to yourself, if the market, if you still had to get in contact with a rep and go with an old school, straight to the market, direct access broker that looked like it was maybe programmed in 1990, <laughs> how many of you would be involved? Probably not all of you. A lot of you are like, I'd still be here, man. I don't care. I'm calling the rep. I'm getting set up. That's great. But the reality is a lot of people wouldn't be. If it's not as easy as just downloading an app, pressing a few buttons to link up your bank, and buy in stock. That's about all there is in terms of what's good about it in my head. There are a lot of negatives. Here's a negative. If you are trying to do any kind of active trading, especially intraday trading, payment for order flow is slow, it's very bad fills, and it's not efficient. You're, you're dealing with luck half the time. Am I going to get a good fill? Is this going to fill quickly enough? Intraday trading turns into a nightmare. Now, it can be done. You can trade intraday on something like Robinhood. Okay? Not ideal. Not ideal, ideal at all. By the way, if you're looking to get started trading intraday, again, we have the scalp setup alerts. We also do swing, swing trade setup alerts, unusual options activity, platinum one-on-one. -on -one. That link, as always, is down below. You get grandfathered in. By the way, those members, guys, our members, we have a special deal with Lightspeed. I haven't talked about this much. Our members get special uh, commissions on Lightspeed, which is the preferred broker among intraday traders. I think it's generally accepted that's the truth in the intraday trading world at least professionally. If that's something you're looking for, once you join, you can, uh, you know, shoot me a message or, or tag me in the Discord and I'll get you set up with, with our rep. Here's the issue today, guys, and this is being reported all across the internet that Gary Gensler said this. This is all he said. He said, I asked staff, and I quote, I asked staff to take a holistic cross-market view of how we could update our rules and drive greater efficiencies in our equity markets, particularly for retail investors. That is a great blanket statement to get retail potentially off of the SEC's back for maybe a week. I think all they did today is kick the can down the road. He asked staff. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Look, I think this was a great way to kick the can down the road. And honestly, for now, I think that's all this was. Don't be discouraged. I know that this is a, a probably unpopular opinion. You'd love for me to come on here and just rally the troops and say this is happening in two days. But granted, if it did happen in two days, would it, would it be, we can speculate on certain things, but would it really be so, such a game changer immediately? Probably not, right? Really, I think this is more of a long-term issue. And whether it happens right now or not, 
We're still in the same boat. I don't care what stock you hold. I don't care if you're a buy and hold S&P 500 long-term investor. I don't care if you trade intraday. You're a scalper. You're a swing trader. You own AMC. You own GameStop. You're still in the same boat. And look, all the good that has happened, especially if you look like an AMC or a GameStop, it's already happened in the current market conditions. Okay, I think a lot of people are looking for something that's easy to blame. And there's a million things we could pull up. Is this necessarily it? I don't know. But the fact that it's not going to change right now shouldn't kill any kind of excitement you have about being involved in the market because there's a lot of issues with it, but this is the best market in the world. And I think we're all just grateful to be a part of it. So appreciate you guys watching the whole video. Hopefully we see some kind of good changes in the future. I don't know if that's necessarily just a rug pull on the whole idea because, again, I love liquidity. I want as many participants in the market as possible. I want it to be easy to get involved, but also this is a problem. So the auction idea that was thrown around today, I think is a good start, but we'll learn more about that in the future. Again, appreciate you guys watching the whole video. Hey, if you wouldn't mind, leave a like and a comment. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Yesterday, I asked you guys to leave a comment uh, on, on the video telling me when you originally got involved in AMC. You guys killed it, over 3,000 comments, so I'm going to be taking a look through that and uh, compiling some data for myself. Anyway guys, appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.